for children at Christmas. What they may not have realized at the time was that this act of kindness in the midst of incredible heartache would bless countless children for the next century. To this day, St. Matthew's continues helping children and families during the Christmas season. They usually do it anonymously, but word of their generosity spread through social media this year. At the local Walmart, numerous families will come to pay the bill for Christmas toys they put on layaway and be told that there's no need because it's already been paid in full. There will be so many acts of generosity and kindness that go unnoticed this Christmas season, and that's okay. St. Matthew's Church wasn't looking for credit, and neither are so many others, but these stories are important because they remind us what this season is all about, and that's the greatest gift of all, that a Savior was born. And hopefully we can all focus uh, and take time out of our busy schedules to enjoy the Christmas season or however you may celebrate. Uh, and with that, I'll take your questions. Yeah, sure. Thank you, sir. I want to ask you about the possible government shutdown and the optimism that the president might have that he can avert a shutdown. And if I could follow up and ask about the California fires and the very latest that the White House has on them. Sure. Uh, in terms of the government shutdown, look, we expect uh, a clean CR to pass with Democrat support. That's what we hope will happen. Uh, funding the government, particularly our military, our veterans affairs, uh, are always important, but particularly now with uh, so many threats that we face globally, this is certainly an important priority for the administration, and we hope uh, something that will be discussed and uh, agreed to later today. Jennifer. On the yeah. fires, I'm sorry. Sorry, on the fires, was there a specific question? Yeah, does the, uh, is the White House in coordination with the, uh, the folks out in California in battling that wildfire? Is there more money to be made available, uh, especially for the areas near Los Angeles, which are under siege right now by so many devastating fires? Uh, absolutely. Uh, the administration is seeing regular contact. Uh, both FEMA and uh, folks here at the White House are speaking regularly to uh, state and local authorities and making sure that we're ready and able to help uh, when needed and when requested by those uh, authorities. Jennifer. Um, can you say a little bit about why John Bolton was here at the White House today and also on taxes? Um, we're a little confused on whether the White House would support a 22% corporate tax rate. You had the White House economist Kevin Hass talking about saying it would be okay and it wouldn't undermine the economy. And then a few hours later, the legislative affairs director, Mark Short, said something about it needs to be 20. So can you well, say- Look, our focus has been on getting the lowest corporate uh, rate possible. Uh, 15 is better than 20, 20 is better than 22, and 22 is better than what we have. Uh, again, we're going to continue to push, but we're not going to negotiate that from the podium and we're committed to getting the lowest corporate rate we can. Uh, on John Bolton, he is here. He's a friend of the president, uh, somebody who he wanted to visit with, nothing more than that, nothing more than a check-in uh, and a friendly visit. John. Yeah. Uh, Sarah, uh, Donald Trump Jr. refused to talk about his conversations with the president citing attorney-client privilege. Would the president release him from any such privilege and allow him to speak to the committee? Uh, that's a question you would have to ask his attorneys. Uh, we believe that his lawyers had a legitimate reason and basis for not answering those questions, but that's something I would direct you to his attorneys to address more fully. Well, can, you Matthew? Explain to me, but can you explain to me how it could be attorney-client privilege <laughs> neither, neither Donald Trump Jr. nor President Trump are attorneys? Again, that's something that you would have to talk with Don Jr.'s attorneys about. That's not something I'm going to be able to comment from here. Matthew? Thanks, Sarah. Uh, Senator Franken today, in announcing his resignation, said, quote, that he's aware that there is some irony in the fact that I'm leaving while a man who has bragged on tape about his history of sexual assault sits in the Oval Office and a man who has repeatedly preyed on young girls campaigns for the Senate with the full support of his party, end quote. What's the White House response to that? Uh, look, the president addressed uh, the comments back during the campaign. Uh, we feel strongly that the people of this country also addressed that when they elected Donald Trump to be president. And I've addressed it several times from here and don't have anything new to add. Can you say anything more broadly about the, the differences in the way the two parties are handling these accusations of, of sexual misconduct? Uh, I think that some of that would be left to some of the party leadership. I'm not sure if there's a specific question in there on the differences, but John. Thank you, Sarah. Have any of the president's counterparts from around the world contacted the president, contacted the White House to indicate that they too will follow the president's lead in moving their embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem or acknowledging that Jerusalem is the capital of Israel. Uh, I'm not aware of any country's commitment uh, to follow suit in this. Do you expect that to happen? Do you 
expect, expect that others will follow the president's lead here? I'm not, I'm not aware of any countries that we anticipate that happening at any point soon. I'm not saying that they aren't, but I'm not aware of them. Jordan? Thanks, Sarah. Uh, last week, the president said that uh, the U.S. would be imposing additional sanctions on North Korea today. Uh, do you have an update on where that stands? Or yeah, we expect uh, the Department of Treasury to uh, put out more details on that, hopefully by the end of this week, and we'll keep you guys posted on that front. Thanks, Jennifer? Thanks, Sarah. Um, what is the president's reaction to some U.S. allies, particularly in Europe, notably the United Kingdom, who um, have expressed opposition to his uh, action with recognizing Jerusalem? And also, does the fact that he kept his promise uh, give him more credibility when negotiating in the Middle East? Uh, certainly. I think one of the uh, abilities to follow through on something you've committed to, as the president has done. But also, let's not forget that this was something uh, that Congress voted on starting back in 1995 and has reaffirmed 10 separate times over the last 20 years. Um, this is something that the president uh, took action on, a very courageous and bold action uh, and something that, frankly, the members of the United States Congress have voted on many times before. Sarah. Olivia? Thank you, Sarah. Sarah, yesterday you guys put out a statement um, under the president's name saying that he was directing other officials in the administration to reach out to, to Saudi Arabia uh, and urge them to immediately uh, allow the flow of humanitarian supplies into Yemen. I have two questions about that. The first is, why isn't the president himself working the phones? And the second is, are there any consequences for Saudi Arabia uh, if they don't immediately allow this, uh, this flow of goods? My understanding is the president uh, did bring these up on previous conversations. Uh, and that I believe there are actions that are taking place for a port to open, and we'll keep you posted as those details become uh, more available. Yeah. Major. Yeah. Uh, any on Monday. Sorry. If, any consequences for Saudi if they don't do this? As I just said, we have uh, reason to believe that they're moving in that direction for a port to be open. We'll keep you posted. Major. Sir, on Monday, when the president became aware that Michael Flynn lied to the FBI. You refer her to John Dowd, those of us who have tried John Dowd is not engaging on that. That's a knowable fact in this building. It's not a legal matter, not for the attorney to say. Can you just tell us when the president became aware of that? You know, the attorneys feel differently and they feel this is a question that should be answered by them. Uh, and I'll encourage them again to respond to you, but I'm gonna have to refer you back to John Dowd Why again. Is it a legal question for them, not about something the president knew and when he knew it. As I said before, John Decker's the only attorney in here. I'm gonna listen to the attneys on this one. Uh, and John Dowd, I hopefully will follow up with you in so short what order. Tomorrow, sorry, what Major, question? I'm gonna keep just, bouncing because I'm tired. I think you wanna take time. this one, it's real simple, it's very simple. Today, the <laughs> UN ambassador said it's an open question whether the United United States will participate in the Winter Olympics in South Korea. Is it an open question? Is that now in doubt? Uh, look, that wasn't exactly uh, what the ambassador said. No official decision has been made on that, uh, and we'll keep you guys posted as those decisions no are made. Uh, look, I know that the, the goal is to do so, but um, that'll be a decision made closer to time tomorrow. I, I think that's an interagency process, but I think ultimately uh, the president would certainly weigh in. But again, that's something that he would take into account, probably a number of the stakeholders that would be involved. Uh, absolutely. If we felt there was an issue, that would that would come up. Yeah, I just have two um, government funding questions. First, does he want S-CHIP reauthorized? Uh, I haven't had that specific conversation with them, but I do know that we want to fully fund the government. Beyond that, I'm not going to get into any more details before their meeting today. Okay. The bipartisan leadership is coming up in a much different atmosphere than the last meeting where he tweeted about how he didn't think a deal was possible because the Democrats were so bad on illegal immigrants pouring over the border. Um, I'm wondering, has the president changed his mind about that? And also specifically, what was he referring to since in a government shutdown, ICE and the Border Patrol aren't the, the, the president is so very much committed to a, a strong border and to a border wall. And I would imagine that's discussed at some point today. I think we all hope a deal can be reached. We hope that the Democrats will be willing to put aside uh, partisan politics and focus on fully funding the government. Josh. Um, on the Hill today, Chris Ray praised the FBI and said it was, you know, the finest law enforcement force in the world. The president said, you know, it's in tatters and it's at its worst place in history. Can you explain that discrepancy? Uh, look, we don't think that there is a discrepancy. We agree with Chris Ray uh, that FBI field agents are appreciated and respected. 
the president's issues are with the political leaders in the FBI under former Director Comey, uh, particularly those that played politics with the Hillary Clinton email probe, and we don't see a discrepancy beyond that. Blake, what do you undermine, sir? Sorry, I'm going to hop around because we're tied on time. So we got to hold it here. He undermines the FBI and says it's in tatters. So what else fear that you know that could create ramifications that people won't trust law enforcement? That people will say no. And again, why should we interact with the FBI when it's in tatters? No. And again, the president's referring to the political leaders at the FBI, particularly those that were involved in the Hillary Clinton probe. Blake. Sarah, thank you. Two quick ones about uh, government uh, shutdown. Chuck Schumer on the Senate floor said today of the president, his party controls the Senate, the House, and the presidency, speaking of Republicans rather, and he said a shutdown would fall on his shoulders. How is that not just a reflection, an accurate reflection of the political realities that Republicans control Washington at this point? Uh, look, they may control Washington, but this still takes some Democrats to be engaged in the process, and we hope, uh, frankly, that Democrats will play by the Schumer rule and not hold uh, this bill hostage by playing partisan politics, and that they'll come to the table, help fund our defense. Uh, department, help fund our military, help fund Veterans Affairs. And you John? Want to clean CR. Um, at some point, though, DACA is going to have to be brought up or potentially be brought up. Uh, is the White House willing to mix at one point a DACA fix with government spending? And if so, when would that well, be the case? The president said that with DACA, he wants to make sure that we have responsible immigration reform, including a border wall uh, and other things that we've laid out in those priorities and those principles. And that's something that would have to be part of that discussion. John? Yeah. Thank you, Sarah. Um, <laughs> from that podium, Secretary Mnuchin and Gary Cohn both assured us that when a final tax reform bill is passed, the alternate minimum tax would disappear immediately. Now, of course, recent statements by the president as the conference is about to begin indicate it might not completely disappear, and if not immediately, certainly. Is the administration still committed to ending the AMT right away? Look, I, I don't think our position has changed on that front at all, but at the same time, look, the conferees were just named. We want to let this thing work through its process. We've laid out our principles. Uh, we're very committed to those and making sure that the, the bill and the final piece of legislation delivers on that. Charlie? A lot of attention on sexual misconduct and harassment by members of Congress. Is the president confident that Congress and its leaders can police and investigate themselves on this issue? Uh, I, th I think that um, we have no reason at this point to see otherwise, and hopefully the, that process will move forward. Hallie? Yes, Sarah, I, want, I have one question, but I need to clarify something that you said from the podium here on taxes. You said, uh, I think to Matt on, on Tuesday, that as long as his taxes are under audit, he's not going to release them. His 2016 taxes, to our knowledge, are not under audit, unless they are. Can you uh, my understanding, uh, and I will double check, but the president's tax Taxes, no matter who the president is, actually immediately go under audit after being filed. So that's actually you, inaccurate. You back to us but I'll double check to be one hundred percent sure. So my question to you more broadly is on this moment that we find ourselves in. Frankly, we have a national reckoning when it comes to sexual harassment. And so, in a, in a again a broad thirty thousand foot way, does the president believe that he has a credible role in leading this conversation? And can you speak to the specific steps this White House has taken to make sure the women who work here feel like they are in a comfortable environment to talk about these things? Uh, I mean, I think that the president treats, certainly as a woman myself, I've never felt anything but uh, treated with the highest level of respect and been empowered to do my job. And I think that that's what I've seen uh, the president do. Uh, day in and day out since we've been here and during the campaign. And so I, I think that's a pretty good start and a pretty good example on that front. Places are having so. sessions, they're having seminars. Are you guys doing that here? Are you talking about in recent days, what people in this work environment can do? Are you there are certainly White House policies uh, that we are reminded of, and I think uh, all of us expect each person uh, to live up and to meet those policies and to not cross a line that uh, is not only uh, not legal, but not appropriate or not ethical. Yeah. Kristen. Just to follow up, um, we've seen Democrats forcefully call for John Conyers' resignation, Al Franken's resignation, which happened today. Do Republicans and does this president risk losing their moral authority on this issue, which is a huge issue right now, by endorsing a candidate like Roy Moore, which has now been backed by the RNC as well? 
Look, I, I've addressed this uh, in depth. We think that uh, the allegations are troubling and that ultimately this is something that the people of Alabama so should decide. Sarah, Steve? Why not well, offer him to yes, drop Sarah, out the race or write in candidate? Steve. Was the, uh, Sarah, president's is the president failing to lead at this Hey, Kristen, moment? I'm going to move around here. Yeah. Yeah. Just a quick follow. Is he failing was to lead on this issue? Was the president's proclamation on uh, Jerusalem delayed because of concerns expressed by the secretaries of defense and state uh, that, uh, about security that they wanted to get uh, adequate security in place for U.S. embassies around the world. We wanted to make sure that we had a uh, thoughtful and responsible process and that the decision uh, and the components of that decision uh, went through the full interagency process. And once that was completed, the president moved forward and took action. Steve. The, the Palestinians are under, under the impression that the president pulled out of the peace process yesterday based on his Jerusalem decision. How do you correct that? Or did, did he do that? Uh, no. Uh, in fact, in the president's remarks, he said that we are as committed to the peace process as ever, and we want to continue to push forward in those conversations and those discussions. And hopefully, uh, the ultimate goal, I think, of all those parties is to reach a peace deal, and that's something that the United States is very much committed to. We'll take one more. David? Sir, thank you. Uh, given the recent revelations that <laughs> at least one prosecutor on Robert Mueller's team was sending anti-Trump texts to another DOJ lawyer, and given the revelation that yet another one was congratulating Sally Yates for refusing to uphold and defend the president's uh, travel ban, Chairman Goodlatte at the hearing this morning said that even the appearance of impropriety would devastate the FBI's reputation. So the question is, does the White House believe that the fix was in that Robert Mueller's probe was biased from the beginning? Uh, look, we are fully cooperating through this process. We're going to continue to do so. As we, as I said a few minutes ago, we certainly uh, felt like some of the political leadership at the FBI was problematic. Uh, we're glad that Director Ray is there. We feel like he's going to clean up some of the messes left behind by his predecessor. And we look forward to this concluding soon and showing what we've been saying all along, that there was nothing to see here and certainly no collusion. The president's got an event here in a couple minutes. Uh, just a couple of last minute notes. Uh, the president's got a uh, event here with um, members of the Pearl Harbor survivors, and then we'll also have a pool spray at the top of the congressional meeting this afternoon at three o'clock. So we'll see you guys shortly. Okay, real quickly, the Israeli ambassador to the United Nations, Danny Danone, is here. You saw Sarah Sanders there being asked about Jerusalem. Would there be any other countries following? And you say, Absolutely. It was a courageous decision by the president. The Czech Republic is already following the U.S. And that's a leadership decision. When President Truman decided in 1948 to recognize Israel, he was the first one. He was the only one. And President Trump is doing the same. He's standing by its closest ally. And we are grateful for that. I think it's also a sign for the peace process because today there's a reality check for the Palestinians. They understand that they have to mm. engage with Israel and not come to the U.N. and pass ridiculous resolutions. You know what? we got to bring you back. But I'm glad Glad you were here just the last couple of minutes because this topic came up with uh, Sarah Sanders being asked about if we're committed to the peace process. We all know that the vice president, Mike Pence, will be in the region in the coming days. The president made that announcement when he said that we as a nation recognize Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. We will welcome the vice president when he comes to the capital of Israel, Jerusalem. First visit of a vice president after such an important declaration. All right. Ambassador Danone, thank you. Thank very you very much. much.